Welcome back to part three of this cube display unit build. In part one, we were doing all of the main cuts and miter cuts of the MR MDF panels. In part two, we were attaching the supports, all the side supports, and doing the router rebates on the top edges. And now, kind of the final part of this, I don't want to string it out for too long. We're going to be making the door, the flush door, to go on the front, and we're also going to assemble the whole thing. So, let's crack on. Briefly went into this last time, but the door needs to be made of 18mm MDF, whereas the panel itself is made out of 12mm. Generally, it's not a good idea to mix and match your face panel to be a different size from your door size because you run into all sorts of problems. But in this situation, I haven't really got much option. If I make the unit out of 18mm MDF, it's going to be really, really heavy. And if I make the door out of 12mm MDF, I can't use normal Euro hinges. By having an 18mm door, it's also going to make life easier for the lock hardware. So I need to find a piece of 18mm MDF to go in here. Just want to show you here quickly ignore the noise of the air cleaner i need to leave that on at the minute but what i aim to do when i'm putting the glue on is to get a nice bead of glue on that that outer edge so i'm i'm looking to have do you see how i'm trying to pile the glue up on that edge and then that'll just help when i attach the miter on the other side of the miter it'll help to fill any voids in that edge and it'll get a nice strong bond along that edge which is obviously going to be the visible edge so that's why I try and get a bit of a build up of glue along that edge. There we go. Pretty pleased with that. It's now all gluing up and I can just leave it for a bit. I'll just need to quickly check the diagonals. Where's my tape measure? Why is it? Oh, it is in my pocket. But we should be fine because we're square there and we're square there, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, 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 six spot on so that's as square as a square thing can be we'll check dimensions as well while we're at it we're pretty much bang on 790 we're pretty good on 790 maybe 790 and a half there i'm pleased with that internal there we've got 770 which is exactly what we want and 770 there bob on I've got the door all cut and ready. I've worked it out with a two mil gap all the way around, so that should be lovely jebly. You'll have seen as well, I put a nice flat board on the floor to work on. Serves two purposes really, partly just to catch any glue spills and stuff like that, but the main reason is because 
concrete floors are never perfectly, perfectly flat. And trying to build this, something like this, on a floor that isn't flat, you will run into all sorts of problems. So building something like this on a nice flat surface makes life a lot easier. The main thing I've been checking when I've been putting it together is getting all of these top corners of the mitres perfectly in line so that they are absolutely all the way around, no sanding or anything that is perfectly in line. In terms of brad nails, I've gone for five nails in every corner, three into the support timber and two into the edge of the mitre. And you'll have seen sometimes I'll have come in on that side and sometimes I'll have come in on that side. And that's simply down to, you know, when you're putting these mitres together, sometimes you'll find you'll get a better join if you put a bit of extra force from that end. And sometimes you'll get a better join if you put a, a bit of extra force from that end. So purely dependent on, you know, how, how it looks best really. Because you don't want to force the mitre in too far, otherwise you'll end up with like a ridge, if that makes sense. So that's it. Just one other little thing I forgot to mention as well. I'm just going to pop some plastic spacers underneath the unit, just because I don't want to come back from lunch and find out that it's firmly glued itself to the plywood because that would be a bit of a disaster, like. So this is the point where we'll not call it a mistake, we'll call it a design deviation. Of course, if I'd put the MDF strips in the right position in the first place, I'd only be needing to use one layer of ply here. It doesn't cause any problems for the functionality and you're not going to see it anyway. So not the end of the world, but these things happen when you're trying to make things and film things at the same time. One thing, I can't stress it enough, whenever you're fitting Euro hinges, especially if it's a brand of hinges that you've never used before, make yourself just a little test piece first and try it with a test piece. So I've tried a hinge on that side and it was too far out. I've now done it again. I've got multiple templates here preset up for different hinges. This is the only reason I'm keeping this drill press is that I have this board just clamped onto the base. I have the depth set to, because the depth stops broken on it, but I just have it set so that the maximum that this goes down doesn't pop through the other side of the piece that I'm drilling. And then I've got a piece on the back here, just a, a straight piece. And then that allows me to move the position of this to guarantee that every time I do a hinge hole, I'm getting it in the same place. So as I say, I've got a few preset up here for different types of hinges. None of these were correct for the hinges that I'm using at the minute. So I've just done another couple of test runs here and this one works really well, this spacing at the edge. So all I'm doing is get down 
we take that down to its maximum, check that that's all in line at the back, tighten up the clamps. And now I can drill the door. Before you drill anything, make sure you've cleaned that gap. Trust me, if you get this wrong, you've destroyed your door. So <laughs> make as many test pieces as it takes to get this right. So what I like to do when I'm fitting a brand new set of Euro hinges, especially if it's a brand that you've never used or maybe you've not used that brand for a long time, they might have changed their design slightly. These particular ones are made by Salas. What I like to do is just double check that everything is in the center position. Because obviously this section of the hinge can be moved up and down like that. So just make sure it's all in the center position And the same for this screw as well. This controls how far in and out the hinge goes. Sometimes they're marked with the center position. These ones don't seem to be that. Mm, let's see. To me, that is about center there. And then you can go and transfer your hole marks onto the door and you've got plenty leeway to go in and out and up and down using the adjuster there and the adjuster there. Doesn't so much matter about this one yet, we'll adjust that once the door is fitted. So then I'm just laying it in the frame with the hinges on. Little trick for you here if you haven't seen it before. I just take a bunch of old business cards, jam them into this gap at the top until I can't get any more in. Count how many you've got. Four, five, eight, nine, ten, preferably it's an even number. So we've got ten there, divide it in two, three, four, five, and then it's going to be one of these things that's a bit tricky to show without blocking the camera. But all I'm going to do is put the five at the bottom there, and then I can mark up the hinge positions. There we go. Oh, I sound like I'm in a bucket. Let me come around this side. That's it all done and ready for spray painting. So let me just show you a few things. I've put a slight round over just using the palm router on the door and on the door frame, just because I think it looks nicer than a, a perfectly kind of square edge. I think a very, very, very slight round over on that. You could either sand that on but I think you get a neat air if you do it with the palm router. Uh, and you can see inside there, we've got the budget lock here, which is operated with the square key, which I've lost yet again. So it's not like mega secure, but it's just, it's a deterrent really. And that just goes in there and locks like that. There's a little metal ferrule that I'll be fitting into there after it's been painted. I don't want to put it in now because I'll never get it back out. The lock itself, which just opens and closes like that, that just locks into a little mortise that I've cut into this side panel on the right hand side of the door. It seemed to be the neatest way of doing it. I did buy a metal strike plate for it, but that ended up being more hassle than it was worth, to be honest, so I don't know. It's a prototype, whether or not I use the strike plate in the final version. Doesn't really need it, to be honest. I think it looks perfectly fine like that. Won't make any difference strength-wise. In terms of the top, all of these side 
pieces are glued and brad nailed in place just to keep everything nice and square and this center piece is removable by the client because I don't know whether they want that or not to be honest and you know it doesn't really need it it depends on how thick the board is that they're putting over the top of this it'll give a bit of extra support in the center of the board if they need it if not they can just get rid of it so it's there as an optional extra and then we've got adjustable feet all round just to cater for wonky floors and all that sort of thing they're all just you kind of screw in leg things and work pretty well the whole thing I've sanded down, given it a, a nice gentle sanding just to make sure there's no rough edges anywhere. Knocked off the corners a little bit, filled any brad nail holes, filled any gaps in the mitres. My final task now, since this is a prototype and I've potentially got to make quite a lot of these, is to document everything about it. So I need to measure everything up. There's been slight changes to the design as I've been going so I need to just document everything about it because once I've sent this off I'm never going to see it again it's going to go off to the spray shop so this is my last chance to see this unit in the state that it's in at the minute next time we see it it'll all be painted up that will probably be in quite a long time unless I manage to get a picture of it in the meantime but the exhibition that this is getting used for isn't until next year so it's going to be in storage for a while and then it'll be off to its final destination to do its job i will keep you posted as soon as i can and i will let you know via instagram or twitter or youtube when it is ready to be seen by the public if you don't you're not going to want to look at this you're going to want to look at the thing that's on it but i can't tell you what that is yet I'm hoping that everyone's happy with this the way it is because I think the design's worked out pretty well apart from my slight goof up on the top here. Let's just not talk about that. And then I can plough on and batch up making these in bulk. I'm just going to brush over the bit where I couldn't fit the unit in my truck. I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in the Measuring Up podcast with Peter. I'm not going to go into it on here. Link in the description below. Anyway, we've got it all sorted. J Heads finishers did an awesome job on the spraying. I'll try and do a little bit of a video about them when I get a chance. If you haven't already checked out the amazing Lego builds that Steve does over at Brick This, go and have a look. There's a link in the description below. You can find them on Instagram as well. Brick This, amazing stuff. Go and check it out. For now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. Remember, there's extra stuff over on my Patreon as well. Take care, folks, and see you next time.